We're now going to look at some two-step metric conversions. Previously, we found letters A and D were one-step conversions, and the reason we said that was because they went to a base unit. They started or ended at a base unit. On letters B, C, and E, we see that neither of them are base units. They're both something with a prefix. That means we have to do an additional step, which is why we call it a two-step metric conversion. Generally speaking, this is very similar to the one-step process. We're going to start by identifying what we already know, kind of our starting point, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at our chart to see what is the relationship between, between the units that we're starting with and the base unit. In the second step, we're going to look for the relationship between the base unit and the unit that we want to end with. We'll be following those units, making sure that we remember how fractions work, where we plan to have the units cancel from the top of one fraction with the units on the bottom of the following fraction. So let's start with letter B. So for letter B, we're going to start with our five centimeters, that's what we already know, and we're going to end up with micrometers. Next, we're going to look at the relationship between what we're starting with, centimeters, and the base unit. In this case, our base unit will be meters. And we're going to write our relationship between the base unit and the micrometers. As we did in the one-step method, we're going to start with the thing that we know. In this case, that'll be the five centimeters. We're going to make that into a fraction by running it over one. And we're going to look for our next part of the fraction. So right now we have centimeters on top, so we'll want centimeters on the bottom and meters on the top. We do not know any relationship between centimeter and micrometer. We only know from centimeter to meter, so that's what we use. We'll put the 1 with the centimeter and the 10 to the minus 2 with the meters. So now our answer is currently in meters, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for micrometers. So we're going to do the next step, and we're going to now cancel that meters out by putting meters on the next fraction on the bottom. That will now cancel the meters out. We're going to put micrometer on top. With the meters, we're going to put a 10 to the negative 6. With the micrometer, we're going to put a 1. So in the first step, we cancel the centimeters out. In the second step, we're going to take the meters and cancel those out. We are now left with our answer in micrometers. The next thing we're going to do is put this into our calculator, where we start with our 5 centimeters, divide that by 1, multiply that by 10 to the negative 2, divide that by 1, multiply that by 1, and divide that by 10 to the negative 6. And that gives us the answer of 50,000 micrometers. That's five zero 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 micrometers. And in correct scientific notation, we would go back one, two, three, four, and we would end up with five times ten to the fourth micrometers. Let's try letter C. We're going to be converting zero point zero zero two eight seven one kilograms. That's what we know into decigrams. That's what we're looking for. The relationships that we have are between kilograms and grams. So we'll see that one kilogram is 10 to the third grams. And then we need to look at the relationship between decigrams and grams. And in that one, we have one decigram is equal to 10 to the minus one grams. Starting with what we know, we know there's 0 0.002871 kilograms. We're going to write that over 1 to make it into a fraction. Our next part of the fraction, we need the kilograms to cancel from the top. It goes on the bottom of the next fraction. We'll put kilogram on the bottom and gram on the top. 1 will stay with the kilograms. The 10 to the third will go with the grams. Because the kilograms have canceled out, we now have our units in grams. So for the next step, we want to get rid of the grams by putting those on the bottom. And we'll convert that into decigrams. So we'll put decigram on the top. 
And as usual, with the base unit, we will put the exponent. So in this case, we'll put 10 to the negative 1 with the base unit, grams. And with the unit with a prefix, we're going to put the 1. Now that base unit of grams is going to cancel. And we're going to be left with our answer in decigrams, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now we just need to put it into our calculator. We're going to start with 0 0.002871, divide that by 1, multiply by 10 to the third, divide by 1, multiply by 1, and divide by 10 to the negative 1, which gives us the answer of 28.71 decigrams, or in correct scientific notation, 2.871 times 10 to the first decigrams. Correct scientific notation, 2.871 times 10 to the 1 decigrams. And on to part E. Go ahead and pause the video so you can try it. On this question, we're going to be converting 11.2 microliters, which is what we know, into centiliters. The conversions we'll need to know are the microliter to the liter and the deciliter to the liter. We'll start with writing what we already know, making that into a fraction over 1. Looking at our fraction, we can see that we have microliters on top. So in the second fraction, we should have microliters on the bottom, so they will cancel, putting liters on the top. And with the microliter, we'll put the 1, and with the liter, we'll put the 10 to the negative 6. Our answer is currently in liters. We don't want the answer in liters. We're looking for centiliters, so we need to do another step. So our third fraction is going to have liter on the bottom, because I currently have the liter on the top. And then I'm going to put centiliter on top. And in this case, the 1 goes with the centiliter, the 10 to the minus 2 goes with the liter. So you should see that the microliters cancel out, and then the liters cancel out. So our answer is in centiliters. Now we put the numbers into our calculator. We get 11.2 divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 1, times 1, divided by 10 to the negative 2, which gives us the answer of 0 0.00112 centiliters, or in scientific notation, 1.12 times 10 to the negative 3 centiliters. I've added a few extra problems, so let's try F. It asks, how many kilometers are in 684.99 decimeters? Go ahead and take a break from the video while you solve it. Okay, let's see if we can solve it. So we're going to start with what we know. That's our 684.99 decimeters. We're going to write that over a 1 to make it into a fraction. And we're going to see what we can put on the bottom in order to cancel with the decimeters. So we'll put decimeters on the bottom. And we go to meters on the top. Always go to that base unit. Now we put our numbers in, and we see that on our chart, 1 decimeter is equal to 10 to the minus 1 meters. And now our answer is currently in meters because the decimeters have canceled. And on our next one, we want to put the meters on the bottom to cancel it out. And the unit that we're heading to, the one that we need to know, is kilometers. So we'll put that on top. We look at the ratio. We know that one kilometer is 10 to the third meters. Now we can see that the meters cancel out, and we're left with our answer in kilometers. Let's just put that into our calculator now. We type in 684.99 divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 1 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 10 to the third. And that gives us 0 0.068499 kilometers, 
or in scientific notation, 6.8499 times 10 to the negative 2 kilometers. And finally, we'll look at letter G, where it asks if there are 345.78 micrograms, how many centigrams are there? Please pause your video while you work out the problem, and we'll start with what we know. We know that there are 345.78 micrograms. We'll place that on the top, divide that by 1, and now we have a fraction. We see the micrograms is on top, which means we should have micrograms on the bottom and grams on the top. So now we'll need to figure out how many grams there are for one microgram. At this point, you should have the ratio memorized. There is one microgram. There's 10 to the negative 6 grams. Since the micrograms cancels out, we now will go from grams. We're going to put grams on the bottom, and we're going to go to centigram on top. And again, you should already know this ratio. We know that 1 centigram is 10 to the negative 2 grams. Put that in your calculator. You have 345.78 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 10 to the negative 2. And that gives us 0 0.034578 centigrams. And in scientific notation, that gives us 3.4578 times 10 to the negative 2 centigrams.